and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. Today we're looking at using brushes without a tablet in Photoshop. Now basically you can use pretty much any brush in Photoshop whether or not you're using a tablet. But if you do use a tablet and pen, you can achieve variable line width using the pressure sensitive features of your pen. So essentially if you press down really hard, the lines are going to become wider and more opaque. And if you press really softly, then they'll become thinner and often more transparent as well. Now, really complex lines with varying widths are not easy to replicate in Photoshop, but there are some options for varying size and opacity using a mouse. And today we're going to look at these. Now, I'm going to be using some Design Cuts assets a little bit later in this video tutorial, and the assets I'll be using are the 550 plus hand drawn illustrations by Zeppelin Graphics. But here we are in Photoshop, and we're going to start by drawing a line that'll give us some sort of reference point. So I have the brush tool selected here, and the brush I'm using is just a hard circular brush. I'll drag out a sort of curved line, and you can see that there are a couple of problems with this. Firstly, the line is just a solid line, but it's also really, really bumpy. So let's solve the bumpy problem by drawing a pen line. So I'm going to target the pen tool here and make sure that I'm working with path. That's critical here. You get some options, you get shape and path, and for some tools you also get pixels, but it's essential we draw a path today. Now I'm going to sort of recreate this line, so I'm going to click here and drag in the direction I'm headed. The next path point is going to be for this line here. So I'll click and drag, again heading in a downwards direction. And then I'll finish off with this part of the line, so I'll click and drag upwards. If I press Escape, I'll stop drawing. And then I can select the line using the Path Selection tool. So I'll just tap on the line. Now we can apply the brush that we had selected earlier to this line. To do that, I'm first going to tap on the brush tool so I have that brush selected. And then we're going to the Paths palette. I'm going to drag this out because we're going to need it quite a bit today. Now if you don't see it in a bar down the side here, you can choose it by choosing Window and then Paths. And this is the work path here. If I click away, it's deselected. If I click on it, it's selected. And what I want to do is to stroke the path here with the brush that I have selected. And there's a tool for it here, and it's Stroke Path with Brush. And so if I click on it, the path has the brush applied to it. And it's a really, really nice smooth line, and the brush is evenly applied to the line. Now, if that's what you want in terms of a brush line, then that's how you achieve it. But it's also possible to get a thin start to the brush and a thin end to it. So let's go and get our line again. And I have the Path Selection tool selected here. I'm just going to drag this path down. And we're going to reuse it. But this time we're going to apply some pressure sensitivity to the brush line, even though we're not using a pressure sensitive tablet. And to do this, we're going to use the Brush Settings panel. So I'll target the Brush tool again, and this is the link to the Brush Settings panel. So I'll click on it to open it. Now in the Brush Settings panel, there's a feature for what's called Shape Dynamics. So I've turned that on, and I'm going to click on the word Shape Dynamics to get access to the Shape Dynamics that I can impact. And I'm looking at Size Jitter, and I'll turn Size Jitter onto Pen Pressure. So it's going to vary the size of the brush according to the pen pressure, but of course we're not using a pressure sensitive pen. But if we return here to the Paths panel, and instead of clicking this button here, if we click the Fly Out menu, you'll see that there's another option for Stroke Path. I'll click on that. I have a number of options for stroking the path, but the tool I'm interested in is the Brush tool. And there's a checkbox here for Simulate Pressure. If I enable it and click OK, then we're going to apply the brush to the line, but simulate the kind of pressure that we might be getting if we were using a pressure sensitive pen. And the result is that we have a thin start and a thin end to our brush. So what if we want to mimic some pressure sensitivity, but we don't want our brush tips to be a point? Well, let's go back to our work path and let's just drag it using the path selection tool to another position. So now we have our path in place. Let's target our brush tool. 
And over here in the brush settings panel for shape dynamics, we've got size jitter set to pen pressure, but we also have a minimum diameter value, and this is going to be a percentage. So we can say that we want the minimum diameter of this brush to be 25% of the current brush width. Now let's go and see what happens when we stroke this path. Now because we chose last time to stroke the path with simulate pressure turned on, that setting is now sort of attached to the path palette. So let me just cancel out of there. And this time when I click on this icon, stroke path with brush, the pressure sensitivity option is going to be applied to that brush. And so we're going to get what it is that we're looking for. But here you'll see that the start and end points of the brush are a little bit thicker than they were previously. Now we can do something similar with opacity. Let's go and get our path. Let's drag it to a new position. We'll go and set up our brush. So I'll target the brush tool and this time we'll find the options for opacity in the transfer area. So I'm clicking to turn transfer on and then making sure that transfer is selected so that I can see the settings for transfer. And we've got an opacity jitter and we're going to set that to pen pressure. And so we can set the minimum. Now, if we set a minimum to zero, the start and end of the brush are going to be fully transparent. And then it's going to get more and more opaque as it gets towards the middle of the brush. And again, at the other end, it's going to be transparent. If we want some opacity to be built in, then we can wind up the minimum. I'm going to add about 20% to the minimum. Let's just type that in there. We've got our brush selected. We've got our path selected. We already know that this is going to be applied with simulated pressure sensitivity because it's set to do that. So I'll just click on stroke path with brush. And then I'll just click underneath this work path so that I can deselect the path and we can see what's happening. Well, we've now got what we asked for. We've got some variation in size, which is being applied through the shape dynamics. And we've got some variation in opacity, but starting at around 25% opacity applied using the transfer feature. Let's go and reset this brush. So I'm going to click the fly out menu and I'm going to reset all locked settings. And so this brush is now back to what it was in the beginning. I'm going to close down the dialog. I'm going to borrow the line that we've been using all along. Let's apply the brush stroke to it and we're getting what we started with. So let's go and get the line again. And this time when we select the brush, let's have a look at these two buttons here. There's one here for opacity and one here for size. So if I tap on the opacity button and then apply that brush to this line, what we're seeing is that the line has some variation in opacity. So this option is setting on the opacity value in the brush settings without us actually having to go to the brush settings to do it. And likewise, this button is going to apply some pressure sensitivity for size on the brush. So let's put both of these on. Let's go and find our path again. Let's drag it down so we've got another copy of it. And let's apply the selected brush to this line. And here we're getting the opacity variation and the size variation, but they're being applied due to these buttons here. So you can turn on this sort of faux pressure sensitivity, if you like, using these two options. But of course, when you're applying it to a path in Photoshop, you absolutely need to select this stroke path and make sure that you're simulating pressure because if you're not simulating pressure, none of the options on the brushes bar there are going to have any effect because it's sort of two things that you need to set. So having had a look at how we can get some variation in our brush, let's go quickly and see how we could apply this to shapes. I have a brand new document here and we're going to use a custom shape. So I'm going to select the custom shape tool. I'm making sure that I'm working with a path and not shape or pixels. Again, this is critical. We're all about stroking paths. So I'll target the path option. The shape I'm going to use is this cloud shape and it's one of those 500 shapes there in here that I showed you a bit earlier. And I'll just drag to create the path for that shape in the document. Let's go to the path palette. Here is the path. 
Now to stroke it with a brush, I'm just going to target the brush tool and see what sort of brush we're using. Well, we're using the same brush we've been using all along and that's just fine. I have the brush settings set to vary the size, but not the opacity of the brush. So I can just target my work path here, go to the fly out menu and choose stroke path. Make sure I have simulate pressure turned on and click OK. And now the brush stroke is being applied to this closed shape. And Photoshop is assuming that the line or the shape begins and ends at this point. That's why we're getting a thin line all the way through to a thick line and then back to a thin line. Well, what if we don't want it to begin and end over here and we want it to begin and end over here? Well, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo that and I'm going to target my path so I can see where I'm working. I'm going to zoom into the area where we want the path to begin and end. Now there is a bit of a problem with Photoshop in terms of breaking open a shape because if you delete this point here, you're going to compromise the line either side of it. So what we're going to do first is to protect our line. So I'm going to the Add Anchor Point tool and I'm going to just click here either side of the point that I want to remove. So if we have a look at the line, we've now got two extra points here, either side of the point that I want to remove so that these two are going to stabilize the lines. Now, what we can't do is to go and delete this anchor point because if we delete this anchor point, all we do is delete the anchor point, but we're not actually breaking the line in half. So I'm just going to undo that. What we have to do is target the anchor point. So I'm going to the direct selection tool here and I'm just going to click once here so that I have the anchor point selected that I want to remove. I can't use the delete anchor point tool, but I can use the delete key. So I'm just going to tap the delete key and that breaks this path. And that's what we want to happen. We want the path to be broken in two. Now, if you want to move it a little bit closer, you can, that's just fine. I'm going to leave mine as it is. So we now have a path that has a break in it, which means that this time when we apply the brush, it's going to start and end at this point. So let's go back and select the brush. We've got our work path selected. We've got all the brush settings enabled and we've already got simulate pressure enabled because we used it last time. So we can just click here on this icon. And this time Photoshop is starting and ending the line, this sort of tapered line where we want it to begin and end. Now there is one additional feature that you can use in terms of fading out a line and this is going to fade it at just one end. So let's look briefly at that before we finish. We'll go back to the brush that we've been working with and I'll click here on the brush settings panel. Now we're already familiar with transfer and with the shape dynamics. We don't want transfer because we're not going to vary the opacity, but let's have a look at shape dynamics. Now there is another option other than pen pressure here that we could use, which is called fade. And in this case, we can make the line fade out, but we have to specify how fast we want it to fade. Now for fade, you can use a value of between one and 9,999. We're going to use 100. Now the bigger the number, the slower the fade. So 100 is going to give us a fairly quick sort of fade. So let's see that at work. I'm going to the brush tool here and I'm just going to brush in the document. Now this has been spectacularly unsuccessful and the reason for this is that I still have this option enabled. So let's disable it and let's go back to our shape dynamics. Let's reset that to fade at 100 and this time we see in the bottom of the panel what we're looking for. And when I use the brush, I'm getting exactly what I asked for. So this is a 100 fade. If we set it to 10, you'll see that it's really, really short. In fact, you can't even see it. If we set it to 1000, then it's going to be much, much longer. And so it's going to fade out much, much more slowly. So you can also use this fade option to get this sort of varied line weight width. But this time your line is going to start at its maximum thickness and it's going to fade off. And you really can't tell ahead of time how long it's going to take to fade. So you will need to experiment a little bit with your brushes if you want to use this particular feature. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these Photoshop brushing techniques. 
Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.